order and at this time I would ask uh, Councilman Soap from Mays County to d deliver the invitation. Thanks, Dan. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, creator of all things, we come to you this evening, Lord. We just thank you for all the souls that have showed up here tonight, Lord. Just pray a special blessing for them. Just pray that you be with our citizens of our nation, Lord. Just watch over us, guide and direct us, Lord. Give us wisdom. Help us to make the right decisions for our people, Lord. We just pray for those that have illnesses that you put a touching hand on them, Lord, and, and uh, you can heal all things. We just thank you for your peace that you give us each and every day. Thank you for our love at this time of the year, Lord. We just pray that you will bless our hearts and help us to spread it at all times of the year, Lord. Just be with our soldiers. Uh, be with those that have loved ones that have departed this world, Lord. We just pray that you have traveling grace for those that are here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mr. Show. Brittany, roll call. Here. Bill John Baker. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Carly Buzzer. Here. Julia Cutts. Here. Bradley Cobb. Joe Crittenden. Here. Cody Fishinghoff. Here. Meredith Fraley. Here. Janelle Fulbright. Here. Don Garvin. Here. Pat Huskinger. Here. Anna Gloria Jordan. Present. Curtis Snell. Here. Chris Sub. Here. David Thornton. Present. Carrie Cowan Watt. Mahoney. We have a quorum. Uh, next order of business is approval of the January 17 regular session minutes. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the minutes as written? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Minutes stand approved as written. Madam Speaker. Uh, I would like to move to amend the agenda this evening to include four items that have come out of committee meetings this afternoon. Ma'am. The first is from the Education and Culture Committee, a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application to Health and Human Services Administration for Native Americans. Uh, the next one out of Resources Committee is a resolution authorizing the Treasurer of the Cherokee Nation to implement an internal borrowing resolution of up to $150,000 to Cherokee Nation Home Health Services. Also out of Resource Committee, a resolution approving and adopting the Cherokee Nation Tribal Hazard Mitigation Plan. And the fourth is out of Resources, a resolution authorizing an application to the Federal Highway Administration for Indian Reservation Roads Bridge Program Funding for Rogers County Bridge Number 79. And I move to amend the agenda to include these. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion on amending the agenda? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries, amended. And those items would be 10, 11, 12, and 13 as listed on your page there. <clears throat> Next order of business is State of the Nation, uh, Principal Chief Chad Smith. And since it's Valentine, it'll be a brief State of the Nation. <laughs> <laughs> Being sweet, aren't you, Mary? Speaker, I'm glad you clarified. I thought you might want to kiss for <laughs> Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. It's a great time to remember our loved ones and some of those that we must remember this evening have passed on. Let's begin by recognizing our Cherokee friends and family members who have passed on this month. We have several people to hold in remembrance. David Campbell, a longtime employee of the Cherokee Nation Housing Authority. Gene Weiner, the father of Regina Compulub and father-in-law to John Compulou, both who work in community services. Sue Kidd, the mother of Tim Kidd, who works for food distribution, and the mother-in-law to Clara Ryan of Financial Resources. Melissa Connor, wife of Michael Connor, who works for the Cherokee Nation Roads Program. Marbur Mar uh, Mabel Engel, an elder from Salina. Betsy Annette Jones, mother of Katie Jones, a student of Sequoia Schools and Gwyn Ridge, employee of John Ketcher Youth Shelter, and the sister of former council lady Phyllis Yargy, who now works for the Cherokee Nation's child care programs. And, of course, Marion Hagerstrand, one of our most beloved citizens who dedicated her life and her work to the Cherokee Nation. Uh, 
Not only was she a sweet woman, she was a powerful woman for her ability to care for our people. We also have Mildred Collins of, I believe, of Cherokee County, Charity Richardson, and Fred Patton Lewis from Sequoia County. And although not Cherokee, we have lost one of the stalwarts in the Cherokee County, a judge, Judge Bliss, he passed this last month. If you will, join me for a moment of silence to remember these and their families. What oh. Tonight we honor two Cherokee veterans for their service to our country and our nation. The first is John W. Stevenson. John joined the United States Navy on April 5th, 1966. He is the son of Louis Stevenson and J.W. Stevenson. John was assigned to the USS Jason based out of San Diego, California. In his four-year military career, it took him to places like the Philippines, Japan, Vietnam, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Hawaii, Guam, and many others. He was honorably discharged in 1970. John went back to work for Western Elected, where he was rehired in 1996. He worked there for almost 31 years. He and his wife of 46 years, Becky, live in the J area, and they have three children. If you will come back down, sir, and let us show us, let us allow you to show our gratitude. Served those four years. We <laughs> <laughs> were married when I went to work for Uncle Sam. <laughs> Joe Grayson would say it's not an award that is given, it's an award that has been earned by you on behalf of the great pride of the nation in the United States. We want to thank you for your service. Thank you. Quick sign. Maybe I'm all fingers. Careful. <laughs> I did get your heart. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Did you say, care to say a word? Thank you uh, to the council. Thank you to the chief. And uh, it's an honor to serve the United States of America. <coughs> they told you that it was uh, four years, and my wife spent four years with me in San Diego and had some hard times, as Hardy knows, Hardy Buzzard. And, uh, had some hard times, but had a lot of good times. And you certainly learn the value of a dollar when you're on military pay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, it was uh, good times, and and uh, she stuck with me through it all. Congrats. <laughs> We'd also like to acknowledge Chapman Phillips, our second honoree this evening. Chapman joined the United States Marine Corps in 1969. Following basic training and infantry training, he was deployed to the Republic of South Vietnam. Chapman was assigned to the Golf Company 2nd Marine Battalion as a rifleman. His unit later was assigned to civilian unification and pacification. He was wounded twice during combat. The most severe occurred four days before he was to return to the United States from a 12-month tour overseas. During his service, Chapman was awarded two Purple Hearts and a Bronze Star. After his discharge, Chapman returned to Tulsa, where he served 17 years of the Tulsa Fire Department. He and his wife of 38 years, Jennifer, have three daughters and six grandchildren. And Todd Inlow tonight will be escorting him. Sir, would you come forward and let us acknowledge you? Thank you. 
to everyone weathered the winter storm fairly well, it's the epic blizzard of 2011. I guess we'll all have t-shirts says we survived the old 11 blizzard. Going downtown Tahlequah and wearing the church marquees, I thought it said properly. It said, whoever is praying for snow, stop it. It's amazing in no water, 31 degrees temperature below zero and now 72, 100 degree change in one week. Our priority during that time was to keep our people safe and continue services to the nation and our, our Cherokee people. As you may know, the Cherokee Nation offices were closed intermittently between the storms, but essential services remained open. The Cherokee Nation's emergency management team worked to provide information to citizens and employees. In a true collaborative effort, neighbors were helping neighbors, and people were checking on each other in their communities. Uh, Charlie Soap and I had the opportunity last Thursday to go do some elderly checks and to take a lady to her dialysis in Stillwell, the pleasure of having a four-wheel drive that could brave those conditions. But the story that I thought was most compelling was one that we heard from Hastings Hospital, and this is a great success story. Tamika Walking Stick was actually one of our day work participants, and she was hired in security at Hastings. Uh, last week, I got several emails and calls from employees at Hastings, and when I get a call or an email, I think, oh, my word, what's the problem? These people were just gushing and glowing about Tamika, going above and beyond the call of duty and making at least 50 runs to pick up doctors and patients and people to get them to the hospital so they could serve our folks. So the Hastings uh, Hospital and the emergency management team not only helped our general citizens. They transported medical personnel from their homes to the hospital. All together, they made about 150 trips to make sure our hospital continued operating. In one instance, they took a physician home and then immediately returned to pick her up so she could perform an emergency surgery. And this, of course, shows the dedication of our people providing these essential services. Overall, it seemed everyone was prepared and the media did a good job of making sure everyone was informed. This combined with a low number of power outages, limited requests for assistance made the uh, blizzard one that was manageable. And so we need to thank all the people who participated, emergency management, our marshal services, our hospital staff, security staff, volunteers, and the Cherokee population in general. In program notes, the Cherokee Nation's Health Services has expanded its electronic Record system giving physicians immediate access to patient medical records. This means that a physician located in Bartlesville can review a patient's Hastings Hospital chart. These records offer doctors a complete health picture for each patient and provide seamless health care. The Cherokee Nation Youth Choir had the opportunity to sing Go Rest High with the original songwriter and country music star Vince Gill a few weeks ago. I am known as the choir's number one fan, and this is the one performance I could not go to. My daughter was playing basketball. But the reviews of that were amazing. He played that outstanding song that swells a great emotion in everyone, and our choir sang the backup courses until the last course, and he turns to them and says, sing it in Cherokee. Front and center, Ten of our youth choir. They sing in masterful tone and passion. Such degree, <laughs> the entire of audience of 2,800 
at the Hard Rock facility sprung to their feet and gave them a standing ovation to such an extent they could hardly finish the song. It was a moving moment, even though I could only see it as a YouTube clip. It was something we should all be proud of. If you didn't get to see the youth choir perform with Vince Gill, then you'd be sure to catch him in Grove at First Baptist Church, 7 o'clock on Friday 18th. They'll be singing in Mass. The Cherokee Nation is offering a series, Using Technology in a Cherokee Way. These trainings will teach people how to use a Cherokee syllabary with today's technology, such as iPhones and iPods and other digital devices. The first training is February 23rd here in the Tribal Council Chambers. The Cherokee Nation is also offering a variety of classes to promote starting your own business. These classes will be held on two consecutive Sundays in February. They will give prospective business owners information about writing a quality business plan. For more information, you can visit the Cherokee Nation website. And Madam Chair, true to my word, I am finished. on to committee reports. First report is um, reporting for housing authority is Gary Cooper. Good evening, Gary. Good evening. As always, it's good to be here. I'll try to keep the report brief this evening. Uh, David is out of town. He's attending the National Indian uh, National American Indian Housing Council Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. This week, he will be back on Friday. If you need anything during the week, just let us know, and we'll try to help you all out the best we can. Uh, he asked me to report a few things to you this evening and give you some updates on some things I think he mentioned to you in months past. Uh, the first thing to mention is that the next Housing Authority Board meeting has been moved from uh, tomorrow to next Tuesday. It will be on February 22nd. Uh, that is next Tuesday at noon in the Eileen Hogner Conference Room uh, at the Housing Authority offices here in Tahlequah. Um, and the next order of business is we received some new rates on our Community Shield homeowners uh, insurance coverage. That's the original um, Native American Shield policy or Community Shield policy that Housing Authority has offered for several years. Those rates went up slightly this year. Uh, there was an increase of about 4% on stick-built homes. Uh, that went from $405 a month to $421 a month. And there was a 6% increase on mobile homes, and that increased the cost from $500 to $534 a month. And that's for the basic coverage, which covers up to $80,000. As David mentioned in months past, um, we have started two new policies under the Community Shield or a separate Community Shield program. One policy covers homes up to $110,000. Uh, that policy will cost $542 a year, and then the second policy will cover homes up to $130,000, and that policy will cost $614 a year. Um, outside of that, uh, our staff has been working for the last two weeks to deal with the snow, as I think everyone has been. We have worked with contractors and uh, uh, in outside areas, especially to get some of the parking lots and uh, uh, cleared for our 944 apartment units that are spread out from Bartlesville all the way to Salisaw. Um, we have worked on getting those done. We got those done pretty quick, just uh, uh, pretty much as soon as the storm moved out, we started cleaning those up. Um, it might have not a uh, we think it moved pretty quick considering what we had to deal with, especially up in the uh, northern areas. Uh, staff and contractors both worked hard to get those done, even though in some places it was hard to get to the apartment complexes just because the streets and the roads there were so snow-packed and covered. I think that is all I have to report for this evening, but if you do have any questions, I will be more than happy to try to answer those for you. Any comments, Mr. Cooper? 
Yes, Ms. Kelmore. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I just extend to David how much I appreciate the phone calls he took from me. I know I think there was a lot of uh, expectations at, from some of our folks, and we'll have a meeting, I think, afterwards. But I really appreciate because he really tried to get on it, okay. considering um, the wet, heavy two feet plus of snow we had. So. Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Slayton now reporting for a Cherokee Nation business. Good evening, Sean. Good evening. Uh, reporting financially on November, we had a good month. Um, continue to see positive results and trending, and um, we're looking forward to the remainder of the year financially. Uh, in addition to our monthly contribution, we uh, had um, an additional 216000 in in uh, taxes that were contributed by our uh, amenities there at the facilities. A couple of items just in general. Uh, there will be a formal dedication on Wednesday at the interchange of I-44 and 193rd East Avenue. Officials from the tribe as well as ODOT, the state of Oklahoma, and Catoosa be on hand to dedicate the highway if if any of you have had the opportunity to come up there and see it since it's reopened, it's it's uh, been worth the pain, I think, for what we got out of that. And uh, we really appreciate the nation stepping up and helping with that and getting that going and completed and behind us. And it's really going to uh, be another amenity to what the facility is there. There's virtually no traffic uh, weights or anything there now. So. Thanks for everyone's patience and help in, in advancing the funds for that. The Oklahoma Hotel and Lodging Association awarded Hard Rock with an Outstanding Community Service Property of the Year Award. It was the second time we've received this honor. And um, again, it just speaks to the fact of the great employees that we have uh, in our organization. Our employees also rallied around the Valentine's for Vets project this year and our employees produce more than 800 homemade valentines for our veterans. Uh, current employment at CNB is 3,977. Our Cherokee percentage is 42.8 with other natives at 28 or 21.8 for a total of 64% uh, native. Uh, one other topic I'd like to uh, give a, a brief address on is the uh, roof collapse there at Catoosa. I know Mr. Stewart um, circulated a, an email earlier when that happened, and uh, it pretty it described uh, the event as it occurred. And I'll just elaborate just a little bit on the event subsequent to that up there. And uh, if you'll bear with me, I'll I'll read it so I don't leave out anything. As you know, we had a roof collapse at Catoosa on the original bingo hall. Uh, because of our employees' prompt action by recognizing a dangerous situation, the facility was evacuated and no injuries occurred to either our customers or our employees. In, in recognition of their effort, and uh, that story will, has been told, but it will come out uh, in more detail, we plan to have a special recognition of their efforts uh, at some time in the near future. Uh, both just to recognize them and to, ex and to express our appreciation for what they did. Our insurance company has uh, their event response team on site, and they are directing salvage efforts and coordinating coverage uh, efforts with us. We anticipate that we'll have the site cleared by April 1st, and we are working diligently to redesign uh, a new facility to replace the damaged one. So uh, we're moving as quickly and expeditiously uh, at the management team level, level as we can. We're working uh, through the coverages with the insurance company and anticipate minimal issues as well as minimal impact on our employees. Uh, we're working to get the sprung structure back up by the end of next week, and um, but we do anticipate over the next few months that it will have some uh, financial impact until we get all of our games back up and in action. And uh, so we're being very cautious financially with our forecast and things. So uh, at this time, if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer those. 
Madam Lott. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, if the speaker and the body have no objections, there's a report that has a lot of good details that I think would be more appropriate in committee so that we can have more dialogue, uh, and especially around the actual breakdown of employment, Cherokee Nation citizens. I have some concerns, and I was hoping that maybe at Executive and Finance uh, that Mr. Stewart could report back to us maybe how they might be addressing those because it dropped below 50 percent and that's concerning to me and I had questions again about the breakout of the report and compliance with the Recycling Act. My understanding on that, uh, Kara, is that most of that is surrounding the blue card issue, uh, the way they're reclassifying that. If you had the white cards and the blue cards, we're still pretty close to where we originally were. But if you have some specific questions, um, if you could get those to me, we'll address that at the Executive Finance Committee. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Schultz? Yeah, Sean, who's, who's uh, coordinating the interaction with the insurance company? Is that David that's spearheading that, or are you spearheading that? Who's working with uh, it? It's a combination on the around the legal issues of that. Uh, Bob Huffman, our legal department, risk management uh, people are. In terms of um, the site, we've got several different people. <laughs> Uh, we've designated our operations team to have uh, on site uh, say so in what goes on as it impacts operations. And then uh, I'll be working with the architect and the construction companies to, to get the thing back up. As, as far as just the, the, the basic coverages and things like that, I mean, they were pretty well laid out. We yes. had business interruption, yes. insurance, and so. Yes, and we, we anticipate no issues with that. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Buzzer. Uh, Sean, uh, have we started the uh, salvage uh, part of the demolition part of the casino? Yes, sir. Uh, we've started the salvage. We've uh, first thing that happened was we uh, the insurance company had their uh, people in there and then shored up uh, the building to make sure it was safe. That's the number one objective: is safety for the workers that are in there. They limited site visits to only authorized personnel to, uh, again, keep safety in for first and foremost. Uh, the, the next thing that we did was we removed all the games with the Gaming Commission, uh, blessing our protocol on how that was done. The games were out by Friday night, and uh, over the weekend, they began removing the uh, furniture and fixtures and and things like that. So they've got kind of a, a demolition plan that they were supposed supposed to submit this afternoon, and I left before uh, I got to see that. You get to follow up. Uh, is the insurance uh, company handling the contract on the on the demolition, or is C and E handling that? And uh, who is the contract? That is their site. They own that. Okay, the insurance they own company. The, the contents of that. Yes, the insurance company. Who, who's the contractor that's doing uh, that? Uh, Bill Four is the name of the company. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Snell. Sean, who's our take on that project? <coughs> we, we haven't got a contract with anyone yet. We're looking at <laughs> a specific company and hoping to uh, uh, negotiate a deal with them. What we've done since last Thursday is uh, engage a, a company on an hourly basis to give us some preliminary looks at what we might be able to put back there uh, given the parameters of the coverage. Thank you. But a permanent one hasn't been selected yet. Any other questions, comments? Thank you, Sean, for that report. There no old business pending. We move on to new business. And now the uh, resource committee is a uh, resolution authorizing uh, an update to the Indian Reservation Roads Inventory. Uh, Ms. Cal Watts, do you want to introduce that? Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And I believe you have an amended resolution that should be substituted that clarifies who has responsibility, and I move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? This is a resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> now, the Rules Committee, we have um, 
a confirmation of Dan Agent as an editorial board member of the Cherokee Phoenix. Mr. Baker? Yes. This resolution confirms the nomination of Dan Agent as an editorial board member of the Cherokee Phoenix. It actually corrects the term limit that he has remaining. And I make a motion that we approve it. Second. 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 Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same as aye. Motion carries. Okay. Item three is an amendment to the Cherokee Nation Constitution providing for special elections for vacancies in the Tribal Council. Mr. Shinghawk. Um, my name is Speaker. I'd like to table this back to rules this month because there needs to be some work on the wording. Back to table? Back to rules. Okay. Make a motion to table. Second. 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 All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries to table <clears throat> for a month. Is that what you said, Ms. Fishing Hall? Okay. Table to rules, mm -hmm. she'd say. Table to rules? Oh, I'm done. Okay, item four is a resolution applauding the United States government for endorsing the de Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. Uh, Mr. Hostin? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank uh, Councilwoman uh, Coates for her assistance on this and bringing this issue to my attention. Um, the United Nations has adopted the uh, Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. It's something that's been decades in the process. The government of the United States under the Bush administration was opposed to it, and I was very pleased that uh, the Obama administration embraced it and endorsed it. I think uh, it's something that's noteworthy. It's a document that's, again, it's an aspirational document that sets forth some very basic rights of indigenous peoples around the world, rights that I think we sometimes take for granted, the, the rights to our land and to uh, exercise uh, our cultural activities and to celebrate our history, things of that nature that we do find challenging from time to time, but there's indigenous people, our brothers and sisters around the world that uh, don't enjoy the same station that we do. And it's really important, I think, uh, not just symbolically, but sometimes in substance, that, uh, that we have a world body recognize these rights. And so the United States has now done the right thing at long last and endorsed it. And so with that, Madam Speaker, I'd move for its approval. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, sorry, Ms. Coates. I would just like to, to add to what Councillor Hoskin has said. I thank him for taking the lead on this and drafting the, the language of this. More than 20 years ago, I lived in San Francisco and went to school at San Francisco State University. I was studying development anthropology, and as part of that, I had an internship with an organization called the International Indian Treaty Council. And there were indigenous people from the regions that Mr. Hoskins is referring to, from Central and South America in particular, as well as those from North America, who were working on this at that time. And one of my jobs was to provide or to do research, you know, to, to help them with. Uh, some of the things that they were presenting at the United Nations. This is something that is significant to tradition, traditional, more traditional uh, indigenous peoples, populations all around the world because they really are in many instances facing uh, loss not only of land and culture but of, of their very lives sometimes. And so this is, uh, this is something that it's been extremely annoying that this country has not gotten on board with this. And, and I echo Mr. Hoskins <coughs> that uh, I'm very very grateful to, to see that uh, the Obama administration has finally uh, approved this as well. So, discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same <coughs> sign. Motion carries. <coughs> item five. This acts <coughs> certain requirements for the higher education scholarship program. Uh, Mr. Hoskin, do you want to take that? Sure. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, the purpose of this act, Madam Speaker, is to strengthen the council's role in developing the higher education programs, one of the most important and I think effective programs that Cherokee Nation has run. What, what we found is there's no real underlying statutory authority for this program. We've appropriated vast sums of money uh, from year to year, which is, is a wise investment, but it's left the discretion for this administration or any administration virtually unfettered in terms of how to run the program. There's some challenging times ahead for the program and the students that 
that it serves. It, it's a very popular program. Demand is up, um, and, and the program is trying to stretch dollars. They've made a lot of uh, changes that are going to impact a lot of students, and we're going to be monitoring for the next year what impact that is on our students. But this legislation <coughs> basically says that in the future when there are changes, those changes will be communicated to the council with at least 90 days' notice. Uh, a failure to do that would make those changes null and void. It will give us, I think, a, a better opportunity to look at, at, uh, at proposed changes and then perhaps take legislative action to uh, alter the course or to uh, just simply have notice of it. Um, and, uh, and, and essentially endorse those changes in the future. Um, again, the council can use this as a vehicle down the road if we want to constrain the administration's uh, discretion. So with that, Madam Speaker, I'd move for its approval. Second. 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 Any discussion? <coughs> uh, this is an act. Do you want this by acclamation? Yes, Madam Speaker. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. One aye, Mr. Baker. <laughs> okay, motion carries. Uh, item six is an uh, act amending the Cherokee Nation Act, uh, Nation Code for Courts and Procedures. This amends Title 20, covering courts and procedures, defining uh, the district court's jurisdiction over child support um, enforcement providing for jurisdiction over children who are eligible for enrollment uh, as a citizen but have never been enrolled and um, it provides protection over those children who otherwise would not be protected and then there's a typo in that same section so with that I ask someone to move to approve it. Motion to be approved. <coughs> By acclamation. By acclamation. By acclamation. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, item 7 is this act approves um, seat designations and sets the effective dates Mr. for the Cherokee Nation elections. Mr. Garvin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> I'm trying to get ready for the election coming up in uh, June, and we need to make two more changes. So we've made a and changes in work already. But District 1, 2, and 3 are okay. And District 4, we need to change uh, uh, Washington County to District 4. That would mean that Dr. Cobb would be in seat 2 uh, along with uh, Councilman Soap. So that's one of the changes. The other was in District 5 because of, because of the court ruling. District 5 has another council person, so that seat will be unoccupied. That will be seat uh, three. So I make a motion this be approved. Second. Discussion? Uh, this is an act. Mr. Garvin, you want my acclamation? I tried that in rules and didn't make it, but I'll try it again. My okay. acclamation. All right. Please. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <laughs> okay, next item is item eight. This uh, this amendment provides guideline for determining the annual compensation of elected officials. Uh, Dr. Cobb. Madam Speaker, um, as you stated, this uh, amends Cherokee Nation Code. Uh, the purpose of this act shall be to set permanent guidelines by which Cherokee Nation officials will be compensated to make certain technical amendments to implement legislation previously enacted. Um, briefly, um, one of the quandaries you face as a legislative council person in any legislative branch is ultimately you're responsible for the budget. Uh, compensation comes under the budget, so technically at some point you have to approve the budget whether your compensation is in there or not and I am uh, have been searching for a way over the last four years to find a, as much of a hands-off as you can um, ultimately you have to approve the budget the budget is a legislative branch but um, what this essentially does is takes a independent citizen committee they make recommendations and we either voted yes or voted no that's as simple as it gets and that is as the uh, that's as close as, as I believe we can come to uh, when the when the uh, issue of compensation comes up, 
this happen in the committee give us their opinion we can say yes or no and so that's what this essentially does and that being the case I would ask for its approval I, make, I second it with a friendly amendment under item D4 which states the report of the citizen committee shall set the compensation for all elected officials in the Cherokee Nation unless the tribal council and principal, principal chief specifically reject the committee's findings within 60 days by resolution of the council. I would like to submit the following language that the report of the citizen committee shall set the compensation for all elected officials of the Cherokee Nation unless rejected by legislative act within 60 days of the committee's report. And okay. that's with discussion, I believe, with our legal counsel and all. But since this is an act, that we cannot change it or approve it without another act rather than a resolution. So I'll second it if you will accept that as a I will accept that. Moved and second. Now discussion. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Baker? Yes, Madam Chairman. Um, I can't be for this. Uh, and, and I appreciate what Dr. Cobb said, that uh, it is very difficult to for this council or any council to raise their pay. It's difficult. Uh, comes up toward election years, and and I'm in an election, and this is not political grandstand, folks, I promise you. But with we just got information today that the budget of the federal government is going to is being cut. And it's going to cut us, and it means services to the people that are going to go down. And in these economic times, and if I've heard once, I've heard a hundred times that we can't print money, and to take a raise, and that's what we're doing, is taking a raise right here. And, uh, and what it really says is that we're going to get the raise automatically unless we stand up and fight it and pass a resolution or a, an act that we don't get it. And I just think it's wrong and it's a raise at a time when, when this tribe needs to be helping our people. And uh, I believe it and I just, uh, I, in all good conscience, I just absolutely cannot be for this. Further discussion? Uh, this is an act, so, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Ms. Gloria Jordan. Well, I, I told you all in committee. I was going to vote no all the way down the line on this particular act. At least one argument made for this pay raise was given by one tribal council member that it would be used to attract more professionals to run for the tribal council. Well, I kind of got to looking at this council. We have five people with doctorates. We have one working on our doctorate. We have seven or eight that have at least a bachelor's. Many have a master's. We have several of the, all of the remaining people have at least 40 years experience in their chosen field. I don't think we can get any more professional than that. Money should not be the motivation for this job. Your heart, your mind should control your willingness to serve your people. <clears throat> I don't think that we need to be given something to ourselves that we're not given to the employees. And the employees are certainly not getting any kind of raise like this raise here. Folks, once again, what we're doing is giving away our right, our sworn duty. What we swore to do when we came on this council was to do our job, to make the budget, be responsible for the money. Once again, we're giving this away to an appointed committee. <clears throat> it's not right now. It won't be right tomorrow. In this economy, we shouldn't even be looking at taking a raise. But only four of us, when this came out of committee, only four of us would vote against this raise. We knew what these jobs paid when we took these jobs. And many people before us worked for nothing. My dad worked for very little. Jody Fishenhawk's dad worked for, I believe, nothing. That was back in the days when your heart and your mind did control your service to the people. This is not the right thing to do in this economy. And I'll be voting no on this issue. I'll miss you. Yes. Uh, Ms. Fishenhawk and then Dr. Cobb. 
I asked Tyna before we started this discussion if she would do this job and not get paid. And she said, you know, Jody, my father and your father both did. I remember playing out back of the Cherokee Nation Marshals and this end of this complex by the old tarot office because my dad and Goodloe Proctor, Ron Qualls, Heiner Doublehead, Rachel Lawrence, Patsy Morton, Wathine Young, McSpadden, all of them was sitting over there at night. And I would run around, I'll tell you, I run around with the King Boys, the Fish Hawks and the King Kids run around out there, out back, till late at night and early in the morning. And you know when they done it, folks? We done it on weekends and through the week. You all cannot wait to get out the door if the meeting runs over an hour. Call for the question. You know? I, I don't understand the greed. I, I talked to several employees about their pay raise this year. A lot of them got 25, 30 cents an hour. I never heard hardly any of them say they got a thousand dollars a year pay raise. We got a budget that was sent over to us this year, folks, this year. Admin sent it over and I've said it in committee, we cut the volunteer fire department they did. We had to fight to put money back in there for them. You cut every charity, you cut Zoe House, you cut all infrastructure, the boys and girls program. We cut individual water and sewer lines. There's, you might as well call the day work program gone, and it was a very popular program that give people jobs. We got to employ some of our people. You deny people contract health, but the thing that bothers me is we're okay with giving ourselves a raise. We're okay with giving $25,000 to the governor's inauguration or $50,000 to Obama's. We cut every single thing but the money to the politicians. You know, Dad served on this council for three terms and he would have had four had he not had a heart attack. And he done it for the same reason that Tina's dad did because he had the desire, the passion, and the love of the people. If you all want to raise, and you all need to cowboy up and say you want to raise. And you can say all day long it takes the politics out of it. It don't take the politics out of it because we know what we're going to get because we done seen the recommendation, people. So don't tell me it takes the politics out of it, but it don't. But if you want to raise, by gosh, ask for it. Don't backdoor it. Well, thank you, Speaker. Dr. Cobb. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I... Uh... I want to make sure, especially since there's media here, that there are two reasons that I'm bringing this forth. Number one, as long as I'm on this council, there will not be anything inserted as a line item in a budget that is the guise for a raise. Because I will promise you, that has been tried. If you, I can't agree with Councilor Fishing Hawk anymore. If you want to raise, then say you want to raise. Don't sneak it in a line item in the in the budget. And if you've ever seen the budget book, it's this big. And as a citizen, if you want to go through that budget and see if we've given ourselves a raise, go right ahead. But you tell me how many citizens have done that. Can't agree with you more on that. So number one, if you want to raise, say you want to raise. Number two. There's, and I reiterate what I said before, there is absolutely no way if you are an elected official in the legislative branch at some point, you have to make a decision whether you're getting a raise. The question is, is how far can you get your hands off of that? And, and my, the, the point I want to make is as far as you can. Because what I don't want is us to sit there in committee and banter back and forth about numbers and how much and when. Look, the only way that I can, this has been going on since I've been on the council, the only way that you can, you can do this fairly unless somebody comes up with another idea, which I haven't seen in four years, is this. An independent committee, and it is an independent committee, and that we've had two of them. And they come back with, with recommendations, and we've rejected both of them so far. If you don't agree with what they say, then reject it. It's that simple. I completely agree with, with Councilor Baker. Reject it. That is your prerogative, and absolutely. If you don't like what they say, reject it. But we've got to get as far away from giving elected officials a raise as we can. And unfortunately, you can never get completely away from it, because we're responsible for the budget. That's our job. 
those are the two things that this is about. This isn't about politics, this isn't about money, and I will promise you, Counselor, with all due respect, I have neither figuratively or literally run out of a meeting. So um, that's what these two things are about. If you want to raise, put it on the table. Don't put it in a line item in a, in a budget. The other thing is get us as far away from, from giving that raise as we can, and I think that's what this does. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Dr. Cobb. Mr. Soap. Yeah, I agree with uh, Dr. Cobb that th this really isn't about uh, voting ourselves as a council or uh, you know, admin uh, personnel or raise. It's really about establishing a policy in which all future raises are considered. And I think that's important when you have a government that that's what you do is, is you don't leave it up to uh, circumstance, happen chance. What you do is you establish a policy and therefore it gets reviewed periodically. And so hopefully when we do this, uh, we have this consideration, it's good that it's gotten to this point in the county. Uh, there's been several attempts to talk about the committee. Uh, there's been several methods in which you go through and look at it and, and uh, have independent counselors look at compensation, have uh, citizens look at compensation. Uh, all they're doing is making a recommendation. It's not the fact that they're just pulling these numbers out of the, the uh, blue sky. They're going around and comparatively looking at uh, best practices in other businesses and fair market value for the, the equivalent positions. And so uh, it's not like it's something that can be uh, pulled over or slid under the, the door or whatever these other counselors are referring to. It's something that uh, they make a recommendation the council has the opportunity to review it. Uh, and at that point in time, you will be giving yourself a raise, uh, not here tonight. What we're voting on tonight is a policy by which we do that. Thank you. Mr. So, uh, Mr. Crittenden. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, you know, I, I appreciate the work that this committee has done. I <coughs> voted against the uh, recommendations last time, and I'll be voting against them this time. Uh, as Ms. Fishenhawk said, uh, I think we know what their recommendations are this time, and and it's quite uh, it it gets it gets up there pretty quickly. Um, I'd like to see personally. This is what I'd like to see. I'd like to see the uh, question in D put on the ballot and let our people that we represent uh, decide whether we need to let this compensation committee determine whether we get a raise or not, and and. Uh, That'd be interesting to see, and uh, that's what I've got to say about that. Thank you. Crittenden, um, Ms. Fishinghawk? Yeah, I've got one more thing to say. I'm going to embarrass a friend of mine in the audience. Mr. Rick Nardi's sitting on the back row up there. Rick, would you raise your hand? He's on the Cherokee Nation Waste Management Board. Him, Ken Purdy from Tahlequah, and I believe Carlisle Roberts. A couple of months ago, our Cherokee Nation Waste <coughs> Management Board decided it would be the ethical and moral and right thing to do to no longer take their pay. One of our boards decided they would forego their pay. All three of these gentlemen did because it was hard economic times and they were worried about money and they was worried about the Cherokee's money. Our board is no longer getting paid but by gosh our council will take it and I will be voting no. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, uh, this is an act. Who? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Soap. Yeah, I would like to just ask how they did that. I mean, did they just say that they weren't going to, or was there a process by which they made that happen? Thank you. Thank you. Can you answer there? Can we ask? Mr. Gordon? <coughs> I didn't happen to be at that meeting when it passed this. If I'd been at that meeting, I would have voted yes. I've been on this council for 11 years, going on 12. Got a raise the first year I was there because we had enough guts to stand up and say, we're going to take a raise. Uh, every four years after that, as far as uh, election years, uh, a sentence Citizens Committee has decided that uh, <coughs> decided that we would get a raise, and, but we voted it down every year. And uh, 
The reason we voted it down because it's up in an election year. And some of these people here that say that they won't, they will if it's not election year. Uh, I resent some of the statements about the running out for the day. I've sat in session five days in a row on the budget and stayed up half the night. And uh, I, don't, I don't appreciate those type of things. I've fought for every raise that our employees of the Cherokee Nation have got. And they've got some pretty good raises. They're getting a percentage raise this year from what I understand. And I think that's what I saw in the budget. So I'm sorry, but my great-grandfather in 1891 saddled up his horse at Vianne, Oklahoma, and took his tent with him. And he came to Tahlequah because he was on the Cherokee Nation Council. He didn't receive anything. And I'm sure that he would be proud that his great-grandson does because it was harder times at that time. And you had to make sure that you had enough gumption to go up there and help the Cherokee people, and that's what he did. And I'm sorry, but I don't believe in the way some of you people are believing. Uh, I believe that you need to be compensated for what you do. And uh, I, you know, I commend this gentleman up here if he turned down uh, his compensation. I would commend the Cherokee Business Board if they would turn down their compensation even more. But I know that's not going to happen. And there's several boards that's not going to do it. And uh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to vote for this. And uh, whether some of y'all like it or don't like it, thank you. Mr. Fishcock, did you have a follow-up? Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, this is an act, so roll call vote. Yes, as you uh, support the amendment. John Garvin? Yes. Chet Paskin, Jr.? Yes. John Glory Jordan? No. Chris Tuff? Yes. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. Kara Callan Watt? Yes. Bill Anglin? Yes. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Harley Buzzer? Yes. Julia Coates? Yes. Bradley Cobb? Yes. Joe Crittenden? No. Jody Fishinghop? No. Brandon Fraley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. We have 13 yes and 13 yes, 4 no. Uh, the act passed. Okay. Item 9 is an act coming out of the Executive and Finance Committee. It authorizes the uh, Mod 4 of the 2011 Comprehensive Budget. Mr. Baker. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. This budget uh, provides for grants, a reduction in grants of 910000 overall, which is a decrease in road construction carryover adjustment of 645000 It does have an increase in education jobs of 435000 the LIHEAP carryover adjustment was reduced by 744000 and the transit program was increased by 185000 and those make up part of the 910000 decrease in the grants. In addition, our budget authority increased by 9143000 which includes motor vehicle tax for schools for two million eight hundred and forty six thousand, housing proceeds income of eight hundred and eleven thousand, Department of Transportation Roads increase of seven million, Department of Interior for energy development for a hydroelectric dam project of a million six hundred and sixty seven thousand, and the HOSDA fund an adjustment to prior years of a decrease of three million three hundred and sixty seven thousand. And those are part of the items that make up the nine million hundred and forty three thousand and brings it to a total budget authority for the nation of just over six hundred and twelve million dollars. I make a motion that it be approved. Acclamation. Second. Yes, so Madam Speaker, I'd like to add a friendly amendment to this uh, model. That being that there is a travel bridge program and that's uh, funding that covers a nominal amount of uh, improvements around our various 
uh, counties and uh, areas that we represent in our districts. And there was some carryover funding of the nature of $367,424 that uh, was identified that needed to be brought forward with this budget mod, and I'd like to make that uh, a friendly amendment that we would bring that forward. I will accept. Thank you. I did not accept it. Do you want this by acclamation? Acclamation, please. All, uh, any, dis any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, and those items that were added is item number 10, uh, resolution authorizing a grant application for uh, Native Americans. Uh, Ms. Coates. Yes, this is uh, an A&A &A, um, um, grant for Native American language preservation and maintenance program. It would uh, expand the existing Cherokee uh, Cherokee language on online classes, and I would move for its approval. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, item 11 is a resolution authorizing the treasurer of uh, the Cherokee Nation to implement an internal borrowing resolution for up to $150,000. Um, this is a request for a cash infusion, and it derives from uh, the home health services due to certain extenuating circumstances. And uh, we discussed in committee today, and also there's a memo circulating outlining those um, problems that they have, uh, challenges that they have faced. And uh, in Mays County, I know this program supports and serves many elders and disabled <laughs> citizens and the personal aides were unable to uh, drive to the homes of these citizens, uh, particularly the elder, due to uh, treacherous roads and driveways as a result of the two snowstorms. <clears throat> and there is no, uh, when that happens, there's no production which depends on the personal care aides being able to make these home visits. So that that's another challenge that they've faced. And, uh, there's a, no cost reimbursement for the requirements of Medicare, including quality assurance, which is a very expensive requirement. So, uh, Mr. Baker, would you yes. move for approval I'll on that? I make a motion that it's be approved. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Madam Chair, can I address this issue? Yes, please. I've uh, been my tenure for this uh, last few terms. I can tell you we've had lots of businesses and instrumentalities and efforts. Mike Richards has now come before the nation and asked for assistance. And I certainly concur with your observation. It's one of those services that's been critical, been faithful to our people, and I'd certainly echo all the sentiment to, to uh, encourage the council to pass this resolution. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The item 12 is a resolution approving the um, Tribal Hazard Mitigation Plan. Ms. Count Watts or Mr. Snell? I'll yield to the chairman. Okay, Mr. Snell. Good. This is a grant from the United States Federal <coughs> Emergency Management to the Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management for natural hazards. <coughs> that will be a grant for planning for natural hazards. And uh, I'll move for approval. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Madam Speaker? Yes. I just want to thank the staff because there was a tremendous amount of hours, and actually, uh, Chairman of Resources, Curtis Snell, uh, he actually, I think it was a week long training because they require the involvement of elected officials, and I believe many of us have participated in different ways and means. and. But the staff especially, uh, and Tamara Copeland's our Director of Emergency Management, it's an extensive document, um, and if something you're excited about or interested in, you should read it. So, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Chairman Snell. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. In item 13 is a resolution authorizing an application for funding for Indian Reservation Roads Bridge Program for the Rogers County Bridge Number 79. Mr. Buzzard. 
Yes. Uh, Madam Chair, this is a application for funds to the bridge pro to the bridge program for the Indian Reservation Road program. It's a competitive grant funding, so I move for the uh, approval of this resolution. Second. Second. Did, did I have a second? Yes, Madam Speaker. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, moving on down to announcements. Do we have any announcements? Yes, Ms. Count Watts and Mr. Garvin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I beat you. <laughs> um, if you would stand and be recognized, we have Lee Keener, who is a volunteer Cherokee history course teacher, both around the casino, Tulsa Rogers, and Washington County as well, and past president of Rogers County Cherokee Association. Welcome to our council meeting. I just want to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day, and also I want to introduce someone in the district here, a former a uh, co-worker at Sequoia. We put in many years together. Coach Mark Vance. Mark, stand up. Glad to have both of you here. Any other announcements? Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, I too would like to wish the council a happy Valentine's Day. And Vanna White here will be bringing over some sweets for you. Thank you. Madam Chairman, the, the chief talked about the, the doctors and the nurses at, at Hastings, and but I'd, I'd also like to put out one for the medical staff that showed up because we all know that at Hastings, if the records clerks don't get there early, then nothing happens. And, uh, uh, and if the maintenance doesn't get there and, and start cleaning the snow out, nothing happens. So I just I want to give kudos to... to Everybody up at Hastings, they did a, a, a banner job. Thank you, Mr. Baker. We know who they are. Okay. I didn't entertain a motion to adjourn, I think, after the cookies are passed out. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Uh -huh. We are adjourned. I'm about to have